Sarah Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. So today I wanted to talk to you and show you how it looks to write a blog post in Gutenberg. And the reason I'm doing this is because when I was thinking about, I have, this is a newer site that um, is a lifestyle blog, um, but I have a big old blog. <laughs> and I've been blogging since 2008 and 2010 on WordPress. And I know how to do everything I want to do. And I found that a lot of the people were complaining about things like you couldn't do HTML and they were having trouble loading pictures and they were um, really having a hard time adapting to using Gutenberg. Like they would try it for 30 seconds and then they would back out. And so functionally, I committed to using it probably a month ago. And I have found that it is glorious absolutely glorious for some things and it's okay for other things um but but think about when you were a young blogger and you didn't know how to do um to add no follow like there was no plugin or you had to learn how to do something it's kind of that same way so there's things that you will um need to learn how to do and there's things that are going to be way easier to do so let's start with um i just have a a, a post that I'm going to be writing and I am the kind of gal who likes to outline things so if I'm gonna say how to find time to write adult crafts I'm gonna maybe have an intro paragraph so you t start typing and it's gonna default to paragraph like just a regular text and that's gonna be based on the theme that you have and then um, say I'm gonna have uh, four different sections. So I know that I would have a little intro paragraph and then this is kind of cool. Um, so I would probably have two intro paragraphs, intro, intro, because that's kind of how I format my blog posts. And then this is really awesome. I love that I can do, um, I have my FTC disclosure here. So I just pop that in. I never have to think about it. And then I'm back to writing. Um, I sometimes, I have a couple different FTC disclosures, um, but this one's kind of gentle because I don't know how many affiliate links I'm going to put in, but I'll make sure I put in one so you can see how it works because that's a little wonky. All right, so then I would have, um, so things. So first thing I want is a heading and it's going to put, oh, it's going to make it, I just typed and it made it a heading formatting. So I'm going to say number one, schedule time to do adult crafts. Words go here. And then I want to do the forward slash and heading again, right? And then I'm going to say number two is stop working at a particular time and then words go here and then forward slash heading and then three get help for dedicated time words go here and then four is my last one that I'm going to have I may have um heading four uh say no to other things okay and then words right so that is kind of you know in a glance how i lay out most of my blog posts but then the very first thing that i'm gonna do for this one um because i'm a media vine blogger i that's an ad network if you're not on media vine yet they're amazing um but i like to have a video in my um each of my posts so i would pick my video and insert it now this is for alzheimer's and dementia i wouldn't necessarily put it in this post um but this is a new section of my blog so i don't have videos but i wanted to show you how easy it was to put in a, a video if you're loading a, a sticky video for ad revenue but then the other thing that I do, and all I'm doing right here is I'm going to the top of this block that says intro and I'm saying make another block. And I always put an image at the top of my page. I know some people like to have words first and things like that, but this is more to show you how easy the workflow is 
than to debate about how I write my blog post. So I'm going to upload the picture for this post. And here it is. It's already done. And then over here, it looks a little different. I'm going to move me over here. Sorry. Uh, it looks a little different. That's short pixel that's compressing my picture. Um, that wasn't, it doesn't make it take any longer or, or easier. And over here, what you're going to see is two things. You're going to see document and block. So if you wanted to see things about the whole document, like if I wanted to say, um, I would be putting this in creativity, that category. Um, but right now we're working on this block. So we're in this block. So my pin description, I would be putting functionally the same thing as the snippet, the same thing as there, any hashtags, you know, I'm going to have to say words go here. But this is this is because I'm using po social pug. You may be using social warfare. You may be using, I think Yoast lets you do it. I also use um, tasty pins on my one. And all your little things that used to be at the bottom kind of go here. Um, the alt text, they're really encouraging you to just use alt text. So I would just type um, creativity, how to find time to do adult crafts. That's it. Um, and then the size. Now, if you wanted to link this to something, so frequently I link my pictures. Like if I'm doing a round of post or I'm doing a post where I want to link out, you can link out. So let's say we were going to link out to a custom URL. And the cool thing about this is once you push open in a new tab, it does the link referral and you can just type in no follow here. If it's just a link on a picture, right? Cause we want to make sure that we have the no follow links so that Google doesn't get mad at us for having follow links if you're linking out to something else. But of course for this one, I don't really need any, I don't need it to link to anything. It's fine. I have the Pinterest um, description. I have my alt text. Everything's fine. Um, and then I'm going to be doing my intro, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now here's where it gets a little funny. So down here, there's no like put one underneath it, right? I guess I could just hit return. And now I'm going to put my Pinterest pin at the bottom. So I'm going to put my image in there. And I made my Pinterest pin, pop, 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 right? And I'm going to do that same thing over here and be able to put my image in, do all that. Everything's great. Now, so I have my pictures in, I have my Mediavine video, I have my words I'm going to do. But say, say I wanted to put in um, like a sign up form for something, you know, or a, um, let's see, or an affiliate banner because I wanted to try to sell something, right? Um, so I'm going to go in to share a sale and grab some affiliate banner code. I'll be right back. Okay, so since this is a post about um, creativity, a lot of times, because a lot of my readers are from Etsy, um, because I my big old website talks to Etsy people, so a lot of times I'll share it in my newsletter or whatever. I might want to try to get them to take a course on Creative Live, which I'm an affiliate for, for Etsy. So I'm going to just come over here, kind of click out here, because I need that plus button. Okay. And then I'm going to say I need custom HTML. So I'm just going to start typing HTML. And then this is just going to be an HTML block. And if we do save draft, and we do preview, you'll see that it loads the banner just my affiliate banner. It just, as if you did, as if you went to text edit in the classic editor and um, typed it in. So, but it's kind of containing it, which is really quite nice. Now, as we look at this, I don't know if you care, but I don't like, um, because I have ads, I don't like on my site when there's, um, when there's, my banner for an affiliate product ad and then there's an ad right next to it because of um, my ad network so this is super easy so what i could do is i could just click out here get that little plus i'm going to say add block and i have a custom block a reusable block 
for dibs. That's not coming up. Okay, so we'll make an HTML block. I might be in my other site. Okay, so I would just say divide, right, div tag, which is um, just tells my ad network to not put an ad there. And then I might come down to here, going to click in, put this in, and I need an HTML block, right? And then I'll say end div, and that will space those ads out. So around my own personal, when, when I may not make it that big when I have all my content in there, right? So say I do that, I don't want to forget, but I want to write some more content. So I come here, I make a paragraph, I make a paragraph, okay, and then words, right, some more words, because I want lots of different paragraphs, and now this is now, I'm keeping ads out of a lot of my posts, and I don't need to do it so much. So this is kind of cool. I, I, at first I thought it's just easier to copy and paste, right? Because we're used to copying and pasting. But for me, I really got used to this. So now I can just move this little sucker right up there into wherever I want. And now it's still separated. You can move things up and down. That's amazing. Another thing I really like is I used to spend a ton of time going down to the bottom to see what my word count is. But you can click on this I, and it'll tell you how many words you have in your post, how many headings you have. It will, um, if you want to go to these headings, it doesn't make a table of contents in your published post, but it kind of makes a table of contents for you as you're writing your post. And if you would click on that, it's going to take you right to where that is. And I thought when I saw that, I could just scroll down. But I can't tell you lately how many times if I'm writing an ultimate guide and it's 2,000 words and I'm like, oh, I just thought of something else or I want to change number three to number four, I'll just come in here and I'm like, okay, I'm on this, blah, 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 do that. This is also pretty okay. To me, it's not as good. I have found it's helpful to find like my custom HTML, right? It's not telling me, it's not as helpful because it's not telling me which custom HTML. This is the first div tag. That's the custom HTML with the affiliate thing. That's the custom HTML with the, uh, the end um, of the div. But, you know, it's nice to have. I don't think that it's bad. I went back to writing my post a little bit because I was like, I know there's something else I wanted to tell you, but I was forgetting. And it's how to make the um, the boxes be like, this is maybe one of my favorite things. So what I like to do a lot when I'm writing posts is I like to have links to my other um, blog posts. And I have found that if I if I make it this yellow color, I've tested yellow, I've tested blue, somebody, um, when it was blue, like, because I thought I would go with the theme of my site, and they were like, that looks like an ad, but when it's that generic yellow background color, it um, doesn't seem like it. So what I'll do is I'll do additional resource, and I'll say free printable decoupage tissue paper templates, right? And so what I used to do was I would just sort of bold this and, and yeah, I mean, and put a link to it, right? So I'm going to say, right, just like normal, this didn't change at all. Uh, collage sheet printables. Okay, so you're going to say apply, and then if you want it to go open in a new page, you're going to say open in a new tab. Okay, and then so now it's just like a normal, you know, link to a new page. So we're we're going to preview that so you can see it. Because all these things, I was like, no, I'm not changing. I'm not changing. This is too hard. Um. Okay, so it should have opened up in a new tab. So let's see what happened. Oh, did it? No? 
So we have to go back and make sure. Sometimes you have to hit that arrow again. It's like they want to tell us what to do. And because for so many years I've been doing it my own way, I, um, I'm not always good at it, right? Like I try to fight it a little, yep, it didn't do it. See, now we have to push that button and now it's going to say open in a new tab. And it should open in a new tab, right? Okay, so first off, you can make this a colored background. And I like a custom color. I know what my color I use is. It's FFF, F, 3F777. And it makes this little yellow background that looks like highlighter, right? This is from old school. But I will tell you that once I started doing this, I started, because uh, my bounce rate was horrible. My bounce rate was like 90 something. And I've gotten it way down from there by just saying, hey, here I have some other stuff. Now, if you have a good way to get your bounce rate down or people love all your posts, then you don't need to do this for sure. But you could maybe use that call out box, that colored call out box for anything you want. And then here, I wanna show you one last thing because I don't want this to get too long, but I wanted to show you the thing that scared me absolutely the most was that I would not be able to do no follow links on my outgoing um, affiliate links, right? Because there isn't a way to do it. The, the plugins that I used to use where I would check the box to make that link do not work on Gutenberg. Um, like you can hardly, you, you, they made it really so you can't get into the HTML. So I was freaking out a little bit before I changed over, but it's super easy, of course. So you're going to go to this little button over here that says more options and you're going to say edit as HTML and now it looks like our text editor again, right? And so here's our target blank that means it's going to be a pop-up so we know that for sure. Uh, opens in a new tab and then here's that relationship since it's an outgoing link opening in a new tab. They made this for me. They made it no refer, no opener and now all I have to do is type in no follow and we are good so that's it so then you could if you wanted to put it back to edit visually and then if you say save draft and you say preview it's all set to go so for me that the the scariest things i think i have found have not come to pass and then there's so many kind of cool new things that I'm able to, um, I'm a super fast typist. I am able to get my thoughts out. A lot of times I will um, have, you know, somebody else writing a post for me. And so there's a lot of the information already there and I just have to format it. And I have found that it is so easy to do so many things. Say I decided, oh, this is number two, this is gonna be number three, and this is gonna be number four, right? I would just change this to number four. And then this, I would just change to a heading and just make three, right? So you can change that block type super easily. Oh, and this was kind of fun. I know I promised it was my last one, but I really um, enjoyed this. If you want to do quotes, you can put a quote in here and then like who said it, right? And then they have little different styles that you can set it up with. Um, and if you wanted to, you could... I believe. Nope, it won't. The quote block won't let you make it a pretty color, but you can make it that way. And if you wanted to make it a color, you could do it in HTML. So hopefully that helps make you feel better about writing a blog post if you're having to switch over to Gutenberg and you've been a blogger for a long time the way I was. I know that, um, you know, switching is hard. And I did do a whole bunch of other videos about how to really use cool reusable blocks like we did for the um, FTC disclosure for all kinds of things. Um, how to easily do your affiliate disclosure. I have a whole video just about that if you want to learn about it. So check out my channel. Thank you, Tara Jacobson, Marketing Awfully.